Hi, and welcome to The Property Show. Let's talk property. The property pick of the week highlights alternative building technologies available in the market. Plus a breakdown of precast building technology concepts. You save on time because the time taken for you to do a structure, maybe a three bedroom, if you are to do it in four months with precast panels, you can do it in one month. We'll also get a sneak peek of Ken Pipe Gardens that's making home ownership much easier with their rent to own model. Imagine paying your monthly rent and eventually, one day down the line, own the house. Unbelievable. Once you pay the 10% deposit, we give you the keys, you move into the house. So you continue repaying the balance for the remaining period as you enjoy staying in the house and as the house gets to appreciate in value. This is a good chance to ask all your questions on the sector. Our social media handles are active. Later on, the accessory spot brings a selection of stylish contemporary and modern accent chairs, a great addition to every space in the home. Accent chairs are chairs that stand out, may not necessarily be um, the same color as the rest of the pieces of furniture in a house, but are simply there to contrast, but yet complement furniture that anybody has in their house. The home ownership segment shines the light on a homeowner's experience on building a beautiful home using the interlocking blocks. We want once we are in the home to just feel safe and secure. We wanted a beautiful place. We wanted space. We finish the show today with the property gallery on investment options available in the market. Let's roll the curtain open for the show. As always, there is something for everyone. The property pick of the week looks at alternative building technologies that can help ease the construction hassle by cutting down on both costs and time. Let's find out if this is the right option to build your home. Building a brick and mortar bungalow takes three to four months to complete, but that's not the case for container homes. They only take 14 to 30 days to complete. Since the housing shortage has been estimated to rise to 240,000 units annually, there has been need for innovators to explore other options of housing, popularly referred to as container homes. This housing trend has taken root in the Kenyan market. Among the things that have made this housing option stand out are strength and durability, saves on labor, availability, they are eco-friendly, and they can be built extremely fast.
some frequently asked questions involving use of logs, a new concept in building include durability. Many would wonder the lifespan of log homes and their permanency survival in a tropicalized country like ours. Log homes have survived up to 150 years in the European countries. Obviously, like all normal homes, one must take care and maintenance is always essential in keeping your home to an acceptable standard. Cost of insurance. Insuring a log home is just like insuring any other ordinary house. By installing sprinklers, fire sensors and alarms, fire extinguishers and all other measures safeguarding a house against perils that can befall any other property, you substantially reduce the premiums to be paid in insuring a log home. The first time I saw the interlocking bricks, I thought they were weak. But later on, as a fundi, I also resisted the technology because I didn't want to do something different apart from what I'm used to. And uh, there was nobody to show us what to do first. About the stability of the building, it is even stronger than normal bricks because all the walls, you lock all the walls, they lock together and then you hold them with the lintel. I think if you look at this brick, this is nine inches and nine inches is a very bold brick. Although the height is not big but the stability of the wall is very good because it is nine like normal brick. So according to books, they say the building can last 150 years. Although I've not lived that long to know whether it can be true, yes. But I think according to the houses I've done already for the last eight years, they are still standing strong. The way you lock the brick, if you look at the brick, you can see there is a groove under the brick. And there is another groove on top of the brick. You can see there is another groove here. This is called male and there is a female on the other side of the brick. So what you do, you let the male and female come together. You have rocked that brick from behind. Again, if you can see the groove that is under, it is already rocked on the brick. So you come to the fore side of the brick. First you wipe the brick. You see? You make, it, you make sure it's very clean and then you lock again. You lock the male to female. You lock it from under, you lock it from up. Let me show you. This is the upper side. You lock it like this. So let me start from here. So you can see the brick is rocked from under, from top side, from the side to the side. That brick is very comfortable inside there. So I can lay like 500 bricks a day. So you can imagine how fast that construction can go. This is a three bedroom house and it can use like 3,500 bricks. So you can see if we are two fundis, we can lay like 1,000 bricks a day. That means in, in three days work, the building will be up for it. do you begin when looking to build a dream home using alternative building technology? Next, a conversation with an expert on embracing alternative building solutions. Square Apple Limited is a manufacturing company 
we manufacture and make precast panels. We also sell after manufacturing. And the reason as to why we ventured in this business is because home ownership has been a bit tricky for people of middle class. So we're trying to look for a solution that is a bit affordable and also efficient for customers. So this is all about being efficient and effective in owning your home. Precast technology is more about making precast panels. Precast panels are panels made of concrete and reinforced with galvanized wire on both sides. The panels need no plastering, so you save more of time and labor on plastering and the time taken for you to do a project is more lesser than our convention or our traditional methods. One, we started from the basic point, that is you need to have a plan of the house that you want to do, or you reach us, we can plan on how you have a plan of a house that you want to do. Then from there, we get to work out the cost of that simple house that you want to do. So those are the basics. So from there you make an order of the panels that you need, then uh, we put up the structure for you. The cost of setting up a house is largely dependent on the size of the house, and the quality of finishes. That varies from one plan to the other and from one client to the other. Assuming we're doing a three bedroom house, to range in between 850,000 to 1.5 million, depending on the size and the quality of finishes one chooses to go for. Two, the type of soil. It may be at times require a different foundation. If maybe you're doing a house in a black cotton soil, the type of foundation there may take you a little bit more than someone who is doing a house on a rocking ground or in a, a place where we have the red soil. Those factors. But the cost is way cheaper than the conventional method that has got a saving of at least 20%. So this technology of precast panels has got an added advantage in this way. One, you save on the cost of plastering. Two, you save on time because the time taken for you to do a, a structure, maybe a three bedroom, if you are to do it in four months, with precast panels, you can do it in one month. Two, it reduces your cost of labor. You need minimal people on site to do this. Unlike the other conventional method, where you have so many people on site, you also save on the cost of transport. Here, you transport only one unit to the site. So you minimize your cost of transport. So precast panels have got an added advantage of if you are not available, you don't need to keep being on site for your work to progress because it takes you short time to do the project to it needs little or no supervision for a project to be done. So you can do your project as well as you're engaging on some other business. The only challenge comes on the people that are used to the conventional method. The only challenge is them embracing the new method. But so far, clients are always happy and we always have repeat business after one does their project with precast panels. Like we have a five-story uh, building in Waidaka. It sits on quick mat Waidaka. So the whole of the project is precast panels. We've done so many one-bedroom houses, three-bedroom houses, two-bedroom houses in different parts and so many schools. In fact, it's more efficient for schools. The panels are soundproof. They are good for all weather conditions. They can work everywhere in our country. They are good for every climate. So precast panels, I will freely advise people that they are effective, they are good for construction. So it's a way to go. When working with precast panels, one needs to be a bit cautious, try to wear some good gear, that is well-dressed, have a, a, an apron, so because they are a little bit heavy, wear heavy shoes, so in the event maybe one sleeps, 
you can't injure yourself. Maybe you are an investor and you're wondering how to go about this one. We manufacture and sell the panels, but we've got partners who are dispersed all over the country. We refer them to you and they're able to build you a home. Assuming you're building your home, these are the simple steps that we follow. One, you have to do the normal foundation. That means after you do your foundation, assuming this is your foundation, for example, you do it normally the way we do it, then you come and anchor the precast panels. The precast panels, the height is customized to your height. So if your house is 3 meter or 2.7 meter or 2.5 or any height, in between 0 to 3 meters, we are able to cast that panel for you. So assuming you're doing your home, you will have these panels. Now, this is your foundation. There are two options here. When you're doing your foundation, you can have this C channel, this steel C channel. You bolt it to the foundation all around as the rooms divide. After you bolt it to the foundation as all rooms divide, then you have it, you have your panels uh, fixed there. So your panels will be standing and the panels interlock one another. So you love the first panel, then the second panel here. This one, this one. So you love your second panel there. And these panels will be going to the height of the house. Now, when you do that, eh, you will have this C channel, this one, on top here. Now, this will act as the beam to the house and this will be to the height of maybe 2.7 or 2.5 meter or 3 depending on the height of your house so this panel will be customized to suit the height of your house that is one way when you want to start it from the foundation alternatively you can forgo the c channel when you do your foundation you can have these panels to the foundation then you do a bit of screeding screeding is when you're building unaweka mbao like this way for example and another one here so unamwaga kwa koto hapa unaikorogea all around so unaikorogea nyumba yote round chini vile inazunguka that makes it anchored to, together with the foundation the foundation and the house are one then you come to have this C channel on top here. It will act as the beam now to your house. This steel channel is also used uh, when doing the windows. For example, assuming now this is a panel and it goes to the height of 2.7. Now, down from the foundation to where the window is, you have maybe a panel of one meter. So assuming this is where your window is, you will have this channel capping the panel downwards, then have this steel channel, which will be on the side here, assuming you're doing a window here. So you have this channel here, and uh, assuming, so this is how your window will be. So have another channel on top here, and another one here. Then uh, you weld them. So that makes sure you have a casing for the window, and the same you do to the door. So it makes sure your house is firmly held. Doing the finishing is very simple. As you can see, the surface is so smooth, so you need no plastering. What you do, you can do a bit of skimming, and then you paint the color of your choice. Or if you do want to do the ceramic tiles, you can just arc the wall as we normally do, then do your ceramic tiles. Alternatively, you can still do the rough and tough to the outside. You see, this is the inside. You can have this as the inside. This is a bit of skimming. This is a bit of uh, rough texture also to the inside. And this is a bit of the outside. So it has minimal cost when it comes to doing your finishes. Maybe you are wondering on how you can do your piping, your power cables, this is what you need to do. This panel has got these hollow sections. These hollow sections have got an, an advantage of where you pass, this is where you pass your codes, your power and your water. 
at this point you come and cut the section where you want to draw them out so this the hollow sections also helps assuming the temperatures are hot to the outside room temperature inside does not change that is the advantage of of having them here so the panels are heavily uh, compressed so they are very strong they are very rigid in fact for one to cut a panel he must use a grinder then do the diamond disc that is the only that can cut the panels because they are very strong we also have a reinforcement they are well reinforced with the galvanized wire on both sides so that makes the panel very very strong This is the sample house built using precast panels. If you look at this house, it has been built in a span of uh, one month. Unlike the other old uh, method of building, which would take you three to four months, this house is perfectly done. If you see, you only need now to do a bit of painting. Maybe if you don't have the man to do the painting at that a time, you can still go ahead and start living in it. So it makes your work easier when building. This is a three bedroom house, a standard three bedroom house. Up to that point, it has used 120 pieces of precast panels. shift gears. Last week, we featured a development with a concept that makes home ownership easy. Imagine paying a deposit to a house and the balance as monthly rent and down the line, eventually you own the same house. Unbelievable. Let's hear more from Ken Pipe Gardens. Ken Pipe Garden is located in Kitengela town along the old Namanga road. We are next to Kitengela International School, the Orchard School. It's a very good development for you and your kids. We have uh, three bedroom machinettes and four bedroom machinettes. The units are going for between 10 million and 11 million. Also available on cash basis and on rent to own basis, which you call a tenancy purchase scheme. Kenya Pipe Gardens is a project by Kenya Pipeline Company, Retirement Benefits Scheme, which is um, an entity that is an affiliate of uh, Kenya Pipeline Company Limited, which is in charge of benefits for the employees or staff of Kenya Pipeline Company. So we do investment in different uh, sectors. So property is one of the investments that we uh, do invest in, and that's how the scheme. Uh, went into property investments and um, that's how we, we got the Ken Pipe Gardens. So we started the development in the year 2016, around August or thereabouts, and we were able to finish the project in uh, December 2018. So Ken Pipe Gardens is um, a nested of three bedroom and four bedroom uh, units. The three bedroom sits in a um, plain area of 130 square meters and the four-bedroom sits in a plain area of 150 square meters. It's uh, located in Kitengela of uh, Namanga Road, which is approximately two kilometers from the main Nairobi Namanga Road. As we were driving here, yes. we noticed that there are other beautiful projects around here. What makes this project stand out? Ken Pipe Gardens is a unique um, development. Uh, first, especially during this period of the pandemic, um, the unit are standalone unit with a detached servant quarter. So even uh, during this period, one is able to stay within their own compound and not feel you know, very restricted uh, within a small area of the, the compound. The lounge is uh, quite spacious and the dining area is uh, separate from the lounge with a master and suit uh, uh, bedroom. 
with a fitted kitchen with a pantry. The parking is big enough to accommodate uh, two cars. Yeah, and that makes uh, Ken Pipe Gardens quite a unique uh, development. We have uh, enough playground for the children. The, the roads are quite uh, big enough and spacious. It's a nine meter road. So the children have, and the family have enough uh, space to play around. One of the things that I'm attracted to this project is that you have different payment models. Break that down for us. For Ken Pipe Gardens, uh, one who is interested in buying the houses, uh, you can use the different uh, payment uh, models. One can choose to buy in cash. You can also choose to buy the houses on mortgage. We also have a payment plan for 20 years, uh, which uh, you just need to pay the 10% uh, deposit. Then the balance is repaid within a maximum period of 20 years which comes with a 12% interest on reducing balance. Let's pick that one again. Okay. If I pay 10% deposit, I can live here and the balance I pay in 20 years. Exactly. Is that the case? Exactly. Wow. Once you pay the 10% deposit, we give you the keys, you move into the house. So you continue repaying the balance for the remaining period as you enjoy staying in the house and as the house gets to appreciate in value. where we bring professional market insights right to your living room to help us make informed decisions. Next week, we continue to share insights on how the real estate market is unfolding in real time. It's time for a short breather. When we return, the accessory spot with a selection of stylish contemporary and modern accent chairs, a great addition to any space in the home. When you sit on a good seat, you're able to tell this is indeed um, quality. The seat will not creak, the seat will not crack. The home ownership segment shines the light on a homeowner's experience of building a beautiful home using interlocking blocks. You know, this area is actually a little on the seismic the zones of um, earthquakes. But interestingly, hydroform takes earthquakes better than brick and mortar. much more. Don't go away, we'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. You're watching The Property Show. We kick off the second half of the show with a selection of stylish, contemporary and modern accent chairs. A great addition to every space in a home. Next, the accessory spots. I love fine things in life and hence the reason why I have all these beautiful pieces around that I want to walk into people's living rooms with to give them character and just to make houses beautiful, to stand out with um, signature pieces, accent chairs specifically. Now around me we have different types of accent chairs. Now um, accent chairs are chairs that stand out, may not necessarily be um, the same color as the rest of the pieces of furniture in a house but are simply there to contrast but yet complement furniture that anybody has in their house. Now with accent chairs they could be functional but mostly the purpose of having a, an accent chair is to give some character, is to give some beauty and to make a living room, a bedroom, a family room pop out. You know, when you come into a room, when you walk into a room, what is it that will actually make it pop out and give somebody 
a reason to look at the rest of the furniture with a second eye. So whenever you consider having an accent piece of furniture in the room that you're looking at having it placed, there are various factors that you need to look at. The size of the room, the function of the room, and the style that you want to express to anybody who walks in and even to yourself. Is the room bringing out your character? Is the room embracing you and just uh, talking about without exactly saying anything, but just talking about um, what you would like the room to say about you. So furniture speaks volumes. Look at the size of the room, look at the style, and then also look at the color as well. So an accent chair is actually meant, like we say accent, is meant to accentuate what you already have, existing furniture. And then also looking at where do you want to have it? Do you want to have it in a living room? Do you want to have it by your fireplace? Or do you want to have it in your bedroom? In which case then the size plays a big role and the functionality of the room. And an accent chair need not necessarily be a function chair. Of course you could have it and have, I mean, you can sit on it, but yet it could be one of the chairs that you hardly ever sit on, yet it actually brings out beauty and makes the room that you are in pop out. Now, I'm seated on a very beautiful piece of chair here, and um, this is our Imani collection. And the Imani collection is dark. We know there are people who love dark colors in their houses, so we factor that in. Then it has all the attention to detail. If you look at the wood here, we are very, very keen on character we have given it, what detail we have given it. And then we look at the sort of wood we want to have and what color of wood does it um, complement the material that we have used. So the fabric is also very, very important. Then we have our jean collection here and the jean collection is vintage, right from the choice of fabric to the way the chair actually stands out. It has a lot of detail that pops out because it is royal and that if you want to have that sort of feel in your room this is a chair that I would recommend you have. Now you may have the cushion or not that really is up to you and the way you would like to have it. Again you may have two chairs in the room or not like I said earlier that also depends on the size of the room depends on the functionality of the room and also depends on the style of you as a customer and what other pieces of furniture do you have within the house. Now we have the Nema collection here and the Nema collection if you notice has wings. Yeah. So this is your typical wing chair that then has a very regal feel to it and almost has an imposing king feel to it like um, I'm here. This chair is actually very comfortable, very deep. Yeah. And um, because of that, then this is a chair that you'd probably look at using in a bigger space than uh, probably um, the jean collection. Again, usually the print is very important when you're looking at the, the accent chair. So those are some of the things that you look at. What exactly do you want? And when we're looking at making these seats, we talk to the customer. We are able to get their needs and then we are able to also custom make them. Now, of course, we can also have the two-tone seat where you choose to have um, flowers there and then you also have the um, plane. So this too is a sort of um, style that again would speak to you depending on what sort of other pieces you have in the house. Of course, we have the good old timeless Chesterfield design. These two can also be an accent seat depending on what other pieces of furniture you have in the house. And of course, the good old favorite, it has a 60s, 70s look when you look at the leg of the seat. Now, we did not spare any detail when we got to making this seat. If you look at it, the size is not your ordinary um, armchair seat size. So we, we extended the size so that there's a lot of space when somebody sits on it. I mean, you could still have a child seated here with you and you still have all the space and comfort 
yeah so this one can also be functional other than just decorative so all of these are things that we factor into the manufacturing process of the seat from the time we speak to a customer up until we have the seat delivered of course the color is also a very major factor the colors are quite neutral so they'll be able to fit into quite a number of houses but then again that is determined by the customer and what they would like to have of course you're going to ask what's the difference between this and the next seat that you see probably on social media sites or along the roadside. Now, one of the things that really stands out about the furniture that we manufacture is the quality and the attention to detail. And of course, the comfort. We don't just put anything in the seat. We are very, very particular about that. And um, because of that, then we take our time we make our seats with love, so to say, so that at the end of the day, we have a customer who's happy and we have a customer who will come back to us and say, I need another signature piece. Now that signature piece can be a seat, can be a poof, can be anything else that would complement and accentuate anybody's house. A customer can come in with their design and tell us, look, this is what I'd like to have because my house is like this and that and my house is this color. So when you have that, then we are able to do it the way the customer would like it. Now, of course, there are many challenges that come along with a business like this. First of all, you look at the manpower. Yeah. So we need a fundi who is able to conceptualize the design, yeah, look at it and say, am I able to produce it exactly as the customer wants it? Now, that has been a challenge, but somehow we've been able to overcome that. The other thing is the cost. When you're looking at a quality seat, you're gonna need to have enough capital. Now, of course, there's all of these seats around, but when you look at how much you put in, there's an aspect of wood and comfort, like I said earlier, where when you sit on a good seat, you're able to tell this is indeed um, quality. The seat will not creak, the seat will not crack, the seat will not uh, feel like it's cringing under any weights that will, will be on it. So whatever you wait, you're able to sit and enjoy the quality. And of course, there's also the space, which most fundis and most showrooms do not really factor in. How deep is a seat? The depth of a seat is very, very important. So that too is something to look at. And then there's also the customer service. If you tell a customer you're going to deliver this seat in three days, then make sure you do it within the three days. You've got to learn to keep your word. And for us, that is something that's very important. And then we're also very transparent. When you have a customer who's given you an order, keep them posted and say, this is where we have reached, this is how much we have done, and we will keep our word with regard to delivery. Should there be a challenge, then we'll be able to inform the customer, look, we said we'll deliver on Friday, but we have one or two challenges, kindly let us do that um, on Saturday. That way we are able to keep our word, we are able to honor our word and get um, customers. Chairs are a great addition to almost any space in a home. It completes any room from the living room, dining, entryway, as well as the perfect bedroom chair for reading. Feel free to drop us a comment on the next accessory we should feature on this segment. Next, our favorite home ownership segment. Today, we shine the light on an experience of a home built using interlocking blocks. Let's hear more. Santeni Sana for having us. You're very welcome to our home and welcome to the property show. Thank you. Give us an overview of who you are, how you started this journey, and what pushed you to go the interlocking block route. My name is Josh Bogori, and this is my wife, Salome. I am a retired teacher. I've taught for, let's call it, three decades. Karibuni, Karibuni to the home. Asante Sana. Very happy to have you. Yeah, my name is Salim Bogori. This is my husband. And uh, this is our home. 
and we are very excited that a property show has found it interesting and would like to feature it. So we're very excited. Asante Sana, yeah. how did you start this journey and at what point did you know that it's time to build our dream home? Let's say I don't think we ever had that aha moment of let's build a dream home. It's that we knew that we wanted to build a home. So when we were looking for a place to live, we would look for a place which was near here. So our rental house was in Karen and we used to come here getting ourselves into the mood of thinking we are going to build, planning how we would build uh, until such a time as uh, at my office I work for UN Habitat. Uh, we had a governing council of 2007 and the Ministry of Housing uh, had a stand where they were showing this very interesting technology of interlocking blocks and they were showing it on video uh, and they were saying you know if you build this way it will cost you half the normal cost so that piqued my interest and I started asking them questions trying to understand it better and um, then I asked them so if I wanted to build how would I access this kind of machine where, where, where are they, where should I go? So they said, no, we don't have the machines around in the country, but the ministry does have these machines. So we called the people from the ministry, um, they gave us a day to go, we went, talked to them about uh, our interest, and they said, uh, yeah, we would like to see where you want to build, and then we will decide. So they came here, they saw, they now took us through, we can either do a foundation, normal way, or we can do it using, using hydroform. Mm -hmm. And we decided to use the normal foundation. So the little savings that we had, we put together and uh, we started a foundation. So after the foundation, they came and saw, they said, oh, okay, now you can have the machine. So they gave us the machine. Once we delivered the machine here, the whole point was to learn what is the next step, which meant there are certain uh, ratios. We at first started to use quarry sand and cement. And the interesting thing, in fact, I think the cost-saving measure here is, is the fact that you only use 10% of the full mix. For instance, if you're told you've got a ratio of 5 to 3 to 1, 5 wheelbarrows of sand to 3 wheelbarrows of quarry dust to one wheelbarrow of, of cement. So that's the ratio. And that is what you're going to build with. So the point being that, uh, true, uh, hydroform, if you have the blocks, you can build in a very short time. But in making the blocks, it actually takes quite a while because it's, uh, it's got cement. It's a cement-based so product. It has to so cure. It cures over, you always cure in seven, in a stretch of seven days. So seven days, 14 days, 21 days. We cured them for 28 days. And in the curing process, you actually have to be very careful because you need to place the, the, the blocks very securely. You pile them, but you don't pile too many. And then you cover them overnight because even the actions of weather can affect the curing of the block. And once they're ready, all you need to do in building is just set them. And they just, they just interlock and you block. And then, you know, the, the course can go up. In fact, I've, I've seen a a hydroform course go from the bottom level completely to lintel in two days. So it, it, it does go very quickly, it's true. And in between you don't put any mortar. So I think the idea of course is that uh, once you've built the wall to the top, when you reach what's called the lintel, now you place a proper beam, you know, made of concrete, and that holds it in place. Nothing can move that. If I ask you to take a block from here, you'd have to really struggle to you know, pull it out of position mm. because it's set. When you're building a home, there are certain things that you must have. Mm. What were your must-haves when you were building this home? Must-have, the first thing was to have a home. We really wanted to have our own place where we can do what we want. The kids, we asked them, what do you want? They say, we want our own room, so we wanted every kid to have their own room. Hence, we ended up with a really big house because we have five children. And uh, then we wanted a place that is secure. We wanted to have a perimeter wall around us. We wanted once we are in the home to just feel 
safe and secure. We wanted a beautiful place. We wanted space. You know, where we had been before, the spaces were so tiny, you, you're from one end to the other end, barely with enough space to do much. So we wanted a nice garden, a beautiful garden. So even before we did the house, we began to do trees and flowers and the landscaping issue we, we were going on with it as the house was coming up. And then we wanted, you know, a kitchen where we could all in the morning we do our own thing. If you want to do an egg, you do an egg. If you want to do bread, you just whatever you want to do with enough space for people to walk around and not stand and wait in turn. So those were the priorities we had. Did you work with professionals? Did you work with an architect? Did you work with a QS? Did you work with all the professionals that one needs when they're building a house, given that within a week this house is finished? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's really true it's finished within a week. <laughs> Maybe we've exaggerated a bit about how quickly it goes. But uh, to answer your question, yes, absolutely. It's very, very important that you work with, uh, with an architect. Because we decided, we're doing, we're doing a hydroform, but we need to go up one story, well, one floor. And for that, we certainly needed a person who can tell us how much uh, pressure the structures can take. And so obviously we had an architect following the dictates or the, the science behind putting up a structure that's safe. You know, this area is actually a little on the seismic zones of um, earthquakes. But interestingly, hydroform takes earthquakes better than brick and mortar. Than brick and mortar. Yes, we did refer to and use um, professionals, quantity surveyor, architect, and uh, even a structural engineer, you know, just to be sure that when we are setting, especially the shutter, we needed a person who can tell us, look, this will take the weight and you can build on top of that and live on top of that mm. and eventually hold up the the whole structure. One of the other things we always ask, building a home is not a walk in the park. Yeah, there are so many challenges. <laughs> what were your challenges and how did you overcome them? Threatened yeah. divorce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can oh, yes, I, can, I, I, I can say if you build a home together with your husband and uh, you still stay together after that, <laughs> maybe your marriage can withstand uh, many other trials. Earthquakes. <laughs> Earthquakes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, because of course there are challenges along the way. There are financial challenges. There are some mess-ups and mix-ups and changes that occur, you know. We had to sometimes repeat a job, like uh, how we were saying about the strength of the block. Mm -hmm. And uh, the engineer who came now to help with building the house tested the stone and told us he didn't find it sufficiently strong. So we had now to think what to do with that stone and we've already built the stone, the number they told us is sufficient for the uh, architectural design that had been done. So what happened is then we decided let's just build the perimeter wall with that stone and start afresh for the stone. So that was one of the main challenges and especially coming so early in the process, you know, just when we are ready to build, we are told, no, you can't build now because that's strong. So that stone, and you throw it away? No, no, so no, we now, that's the stone the we use, the perimeter it's the wall. the one we use right here. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much and congratulations. When I go to any home mm. and I see, especially a technology that we are all watching and see, is, are we ready? And most of us are very scared of trying the new thing. Mm. And here you try it and voila, the house is beautiful mm. and it's nice. Thank you so much and congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. It's such an inspiring story that shed a glimmer of hope to aspiring homeowners. You too could inspire someone with your story. Just give us a call and we'll be at your doorstep. Next, other investment options available in the market, the Property Gallery.
Royal Gates is a gated community located in Acacia, 4 kilometers from Kitangela town. This development consists of 78 four-bedroom detached townhouses. Amenities include a spacious lounge with a separate dining area, modern kitchen fitted with quality appliances and ample storage space, master ensuite bedroom with inbuilt wardrobes and a bathtub, an ensuite guest bedroom, two additional bedrooms with a common bathroom, internet ready as well as a centralized TV port. Other features include detached ensuite DSQ with ample wash area, two parking slots per house, a swimming pool, a fully equipped gym, borehole and wastewater recycling system, private gardens, children's playground, CCTV cameras, electric fence and perimeter walls for security, street lighting, solar power and cabra paved driveway. Parkwood Villas are modern townhouses located on Wanainchi Road off Mombasa Road in Siokimau. These modern townhouses comprise of 94 four-bedroom units plus TSQ with open living spaces connecting to a private garden. Additionally, the wonderful craftsmanship throughout includes floor-to-ceiling vibrancy with full-height aluminium windows to allow maximum natural light. Amenities include spacious dining and living room on the ground floor connecting to a private garden, spacious open plan kitchen, three bedrooms all en suite on the first floor, a full floor master en suite on the second floor giving a serene escape, European chrome brazier finishes in all bathrooms, salient features include solar water heating and backup power, separate retreat area, kids playing area, and private parking for two cars. Avenue, we have a range of properties available for sale as well as to let. We also arrange private viewing. Visit our offices or connect with us on all our social media platforms. Thank you for watching The Property Show. See you next Sunday for another episode with insights, experiences and real-time guidance on how you too can get a slice of the real estate pie. Let's keep talking on our social media handles. As always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri! Hey,